<laughs> well, everyone's had a chance to listen to the whole album together. And uh, I, one of my first impressions on my first listen through was how it really is a whole, how it really flows together and, and feels so intentional with the, the way the tracks were placed and mostly in particular, um, how it begins with the mm. intro. Can you tell me about wanting that song first, uh, Light In, Moon On, and the intro, and, and setting the tone for the record? Mm -hmm. um, it's actually pretty amazing the way that the track listing came about to begin with, because um, when I sent Sandro, <clears throat> I sent him a bunch of demos, and he, you know, out of out of more than the nine songs, mm -hmm. he said, I think that we should do I'm hearing I'm kind of like feeling and hearing these nine songs in this order. And he even from just the demos, like before they were anything close to how they evolved to be the album songs, he had already sort of seen it or kind of was able to shape it. So I thought that was that was really cool. Wow. Um, yeah. And light around the body. I mean, it just there were moments where I like tried to play around with having it as, in a different place in the order, but it, we always just kept coming back to, you know, that needing to be the for, the opening sort of sentiment of the album. Right. Um, and I just loved how <clears throat> like the spaciousness of the intro giving um, Tom and Nick, like they were just doing this really, beautiful like almost sort of improvised um interplay and it was just like it just felt so good and then yeah I thought also that the opening lines you know as you sort of referenced to in the in ponder beat was um yeah just just was was sort of an invitation to the listeners to be kind of like stepping into this this world into this soundscape and um and you know that we were going to keep the lights <laughs> The lights dimmed a little <laughs> bit for the album and so this was our way of being like yeah this was the invitation so yeah I love how the song turned out we stretched it out quite a bit in the studio and yeah <laughs> so this is the second album that you've done with Sandro Perry and mm -hmm. uh I know why because I am a fan of the work that he does tell me why this was in, an important choice for you to make for this album hmm yeah, I mean, I, I would love to keep making records with Sandro for as long as possible, just because, yeah, he's, he's such a brilliant producer and so wonderful to work with. Um, yeah, and it just, it, it, it just, it was felt, it was so obvious that I wanted, that we, and that we wanted to work together again, because, um, yeah, and the first album was also, was such a positive experience, and <clears throat> you know, like any kind of new relationship, you, you work out some communication kinks, or you just, you know, you like, you iron it out. So especially once we'd had that first, um, first album under our belt, and that it was, it was essentially just, it was so fun. And, you know, the studio can, is a lot of work, of course, and mm -hmm. kind of forget that in between every time. Um, but with the the band as well, we we just had so much fun and and um, the songs just, you know, Sandra just helped me get out of my own way essentially and bring the songs to their fullest potential is, is sometimes how I think about that relationship. Um, and so, yeah, I, I was it, it it was very obvious for me that I was was hoping to work with him again. Mm -hmm. So that 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 breather that you give us at the at the beginning of the album to sort of enter that space of the experience when when you are writing uh or maybe this is as well as when as you, you are performing is there a space for you as well that you go to and how would you describe what that creative place feels like mm. Mm, that's a good question. Uh, I'm probably able to go to that creative space more when I'm performing. Well, there I'm able to go to those spaces when I'm performing and writing, but they're really different. 
Somehow. Um, and it's also a little bit different if I'm playing with a band or if I'm playing solo. Right. Um, <clears throat> in some ways, when I'm playing with the band, I need to concentrate more, you know, <laughs> and, you know, make sure we're all we're all our unified whole. Um, but it does also. Yeah, it allows me to drift a little bit. But when I'm definitely when I'm performing solo, which which I do quite a bit. Mm. That's probably what I do the most. Um, yeah, especially if it's songs that I'm, you know, I mean, all of my songs are, I, there's a muscle memory to them. Right. So, so I'm able to sort of, yeah, you know, I stay like, I stay tethered to the song and to the, the space, but I, I, I am able to, to drift away a little bit. <laughs> um, I've never actually thought about like the quality of that feeling I mean to be perfectly honest sometimes I'm like running the grocery list in my head which yes. I know isn't the most yes <laughs> creative or you know romantic notion of <laughs> but it has to be elusive to. right I mean that sort of special place particularly when you're writing it, it it's not something you can count on and say, okay, let's drag out that feeling and here comes the music. And oh, certainly not. Yeah. Mm. That part, that part is, feels totally random. Mm. And like, you know, if, if, yeah, if you're lucky and you get sort of like a, a, a visit <clears throat> almost <clears throat> ah. by a song nugget, that that's what it feels like a lot of the time. Um, I, I've um, heard this amazing story that was, I actually heard it on a Elizabeth Gilbert TED talk, but about Ruth Stone, who's mm -hmm. an American poet. I'm not sure if you've ever heard this story, but <clears throat> she was this, this poet and she would be like out working in her field and would literally see her poems, like a poem thunder across the countryside. It's this incredible story. And she would have to drop what she was doing and like run into the house to try to grab a pen and to try to grab the poem in time. <laughs> And, so, and, you know, so she would like write it down and sometimes she would like grab the poem by the tail and it, she would write it with her hand and it would come out like backwards. And other times she would like miss it and see it run off and was going to visit someone else. So, you know, I'm not like that, you know, that's, that's a pretty magical, I, I love that. Um, I love that. And that doesn't happen to me all that often, but, but sometimes it does. And that's, that's kind of the, <laughs> what I like to pull up is this, this idea of like, yeah, we're just, we're being visited and sometimes we catch them and, and hopefully we do if, if it's a song that's like meant to come for us and sometimes we don't, and that's, that's okay. Yeah, but, there, there yeah. are lines and there are ideas and pictures. You present pictures to me in, in the first song, they get revisited um in other in other songs um in that opening track you know it's i think about that that idea of looking in other people's windows in their houses and uh it's about homes and mm. sleeping in someone else's bed and the image of someone sort of wailing on a rooftop or lying on a forest floor. They're all pictures and images and feelings that uh, we all know that, uh, that have an imprint on us. And the other one, the other line that got me is, is about broken bones. And that's, a, and that's something that you pick up again in, this, in the second song, in the Swallows Call. Um, Tell me about that idea or that metaphor of that we are broken bones sort of waiting to set. Yeah, I mean, I think <clears throat> throughout most of our lives, it's sort of a process of attempting to set our, our broken bones, you know, through various relationships and travels. And I guess it, it sort of talks about this idea that, um, yeah, that we're all, that we all carry a lot of pain and um, through different experiences and some of this pain, as I referenced later in the album is, <clears throat> you know, inherited, kind of familial that we, you know, that is just passed on to us. And, um, but yeah, this notion also that, that it's a healing process, 
Mm. And so, yeah, the broken bones are mending and, you know, we're, we're broken bones in our, just in, in our vessel, the vessel of our body, but it's like, it's a process of doing the work of trying to just exist in this <laughs> beautiful, but complicated, challenging world. And yeah, we're all doing our best to, to help each other however we can too. This, uh, the album I know was recorded during COVID. Um, was it written during COVID as well? Is there, is there something of the pandemic experience in the writing or was it really just an experience of trying to get people together in the same room to be able to record something? Um, a few of the songs were written during COVID. Yeah, they oh, were yes. written during the, um, the really early days of, of quarantine when the worst time I think yeah the most like sort of frightening and unsettling time so some of the some of my favorite songs on the album actually were written during that time skinny legs um, and green belt were written um, and yeah it's sort of a sort of a compilation so some songs were written in that time um, when I just moved to Victoria a lot of the songs were written um, at the BAMP Center I guess the, the previous fall mm -hmm. where I <clears throat> do have done lots of writing over the years, which has been really fortunate. Mm -hmm. um, and then a few of the songs were um, older songs that hadn't, hadn't like found a home on an album or on earlier albums. So it was really nice that to be like, oh yeah, these actually like help complete this, this sonic picture. So yeah, they were definitely spread out over a few different um, environments and mm. there's a line in swallows call that i loved where it, you the line is i follow i follow the bizarre mm. <laughs> is that a life philosophy Dana? is that what we're hearing there <laughs> i think so <laughs> i think that that's what the that's what touring and <laughs> being a musician feels like to be honest it's just yeah one bizarre moment after another does it pay dividends though or is it just that you end up with a collection of bizarre stuff in your head <laughs> what what are the dividends of that <laughs> oh gosh so many I think so many like wonderful friendships you know across the world and mm -hmm. um wonderful memories and experiences and you know and of course of, of course it's not all bizarre like there's moments on on tour that are quite boring and repetitive but yeah I mean also the the notion of the bizarre I guess it's yeah it's more than just being a touring musician like you said it's kind of a, a lifestyle choice and mm -hmm. sort of a an ethics or an ethos of like how I want to move move through the world when I listened to the, the this album the astral plane I was I was getting this sense and this picture of you in a very sort of in a troubadour way that uh, I, when I know about all the places that you have lived and you've traveled to and your music, you know, goes with you. And it, I have this feeling of the, the very ancient tradition of being a troubadour. Does that appeal mm. to you or make sense to you in any way? Mm -hmm, certainly. Um, yeah, I, I love that notion. I remember I once pulled the bard card <clears throat> out of a tarot deck. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's me. That really resonated. Um, and also I'm, I have a really high prescription. I'm like al almost considered like legally visually impaired without my glasses. But sometimes I think about, and I think about how if I was born, like, you know, before the technology of glasses or contacts, I, you know, what good would I be to my community? I wouldn't be able to help to harvest food or take care of babies. And then I was like, oh, I could, I could be uh, the storyteller or the, the bard in some way the troubadour so <laughs> you, you'd be sitting on a on a wood stump outside of your cottage in the local village singing oh, songs that sounds wonderful I wish that that's what I could do with my life today <laughs> Only. there's there's a what I love about this music is there is nothing obvious about it if there's one thing that turns me off about music is when I can I know the structure like, a, you know, from, you know, the third chord change, you just know how it's going to play out. And you can even hum along, you know, sort of the uh -huh. first time. But there is no obvious structure in this music. Uh 
<laughs> and 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 I love that because it keeps my ear tuned every moment to what's going to happen next. And I I've tried to imagine what the demos would be like um, at the very beginning and and the process of putting them together, whether whether you and Sandra were pulling apart what you wrote or whether you were trying to piece it together in some way. Mm. How would, what would you think about <clears throat> the answer to that one? Um, yeah, well, it's, it was actually more of a whole, a sort of collaborative band process, I would say, mm. in the studio. Um, yeah, it was, it was really great. So the, the band had all gotten the, the demos. And then when we got together in the studio, we would just, you know, Sandra would <clears throat> kind of step back and we just ran the song and with every, everyone having the freedom to, you know, input whatever it was that they were feeling. So it was very, um, yeah, it felt very like spontaneous and, um, and energetic and like, and new. And then, and then Sandra would come and, and help us or like give suggestions to kind of shape the songs a little bit more and yeah we all I, I would say it was more a, a matter of like of pulling pulling apart after that mm. once we'd kind of um yeah pulling apart and then like shaping and then a little bit of putting back together and maybe pulling from there and, and molding a bit so yeah it's it's a kind of like magical process it's a little bit hard to describe being in in the studio and I don't think it's one you can recreate you know otherwise because there's just something about that that energy and um those moments that yeah that are their own special quality yeah and and how you're able to keep the looseness in them you know mm -hmm. they they feel like they um maybe after you've toured them for two or three years, it will feel different. But on the on the record, I love that it still feels very loose, like it's still coming together in some kind of, as you say, um, um, there's some magic involved in this, but it holds together enough that uh, you you get us through um, with <laughs> confidence, but it's like, I, I just love the lack of structure there. That's really appealing. Sweet. Yeah. And, and I think that's a testament like to the, the, the brilliance of the musicians who I was working with as well, because it's mm -hmm. actually, I would say, much harder to pull that off, you know, mm -hmm. than, than to just obviously a, a more straight, <clears throat> straightforward sort of song. So, um, yeah, but I was very fortunate to have this, this great band. <laughs> great band. Yeah. Um, a crude likeness, the song, there's, there are things in images in that song too that I heard in the first song about being up on the rooftop and singing childlike songs mm -hmm. there has to be an experience that you've had I think <laughs> of climbing up onto a roof and doing some singing that mm -hmm. must be an important thing for you <clears throat> oh yeah I'm always happy to be on a roof <laughs> <laughs> under the stars and singing yeah that, that feels like yeah there's a there's a special quality to that experience that just feels like I'm acknowledging how you know small I am in this big beautiful world but I'm here to sort of like <laughs> receive whatever I'm higher up I'm up on the rooftop so I'm closer so is that something you do often? Crawl out of windows and get onto roofs and <laughs> I wish looking for I, the bigger picture? Yeah, I, I wish that I was doing it more these days, to be honest. I'm still hunting down a good rooftop in Victoria that I can <laughs> crawl out onto. Um, but yeah, the notion also of, of like childhood songs is um yeah, feels feels like a big one for me too. Or singing or the songs that were like sung to us as as children. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, there's there to me that's like a very safe, safe place is are those those mm -hmm. songs and th that feeling. Mm -hmm. The song Skinny Legs. Uh, once I knew the story behind the album, and I knew that this song was about your grandmother, and I knew that she had had a serious stroke and had spent some time not being able to speak. Um 
it began to feel like the heart of the album to me. Um, tell me, tell me about that song and where it sits in in the whole feel of the record for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly, I would agree. It feels like <clears throat> like the heartbeat of the album for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's just such became such a like such a significant question, like when the when the memory keeper essentially mm. and the storyteller like fall silent like how do you reconcile with that how do you reckon with that you know and so then you're sort of it's this you know you try not to panic of like oh did I hear enough like did I receive enough like do I feel confident to then pass it on to like you know what who whoever's next and and then yeah this whole notion of you know there's been obviously so so much like writing done about just how 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 memories are stored in the body you know like the body keeps the score and that kind of notion I find really really powerful um so yeah just this idea I guess that even though <clears throat> my grandmother is not able to speak anymore you know, she, she has successfully, she did successfully pass so much on to me. <laughs> and, and yeah, a lot of that actually lives in my body. And, um, and yeah, it was really just a, just a testament to, I mean, it, I don't, you know, I don't really talk, the, the song is more, it's like a, it's like a conversation with her, sort of a one-sided conversation. It talks less about in, in my mind, it's a testament to like to her incredible life, even though that's less, you know, addressed in the song. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it really, um, yeah, I had this one really powerful moment with my grandmother a long time ago where, you know, we'd finished lighting the Shabbat candles. And, you know, after you do that, you kind of t take a moment and, and um, <clears throat> you know, my grandmother started started crying and I, I was holding her and, and hugging her and I just like felt in her in my arms like she was like a she was a child like mm -hmm. crying for her parents you know she was 12 or 13 when she was taken to the concentration camps and lost her parents and lost her childhood you know so there were these moments where I like glimpsed in my grandmother this like she was just a child who you know then went on to of course like live this amazing life and have a family but like in her essence like her life was was really stolen from her at that age so and it was yeah it was like real this like real feeling so the the line skinny legs and all even though of course it's sort of a Kurt Vonnegut you know reference as well mm -hmm. um is really just this notion of like my of my grandmother just as a as a child like swinging her legs over the side of the mm -hmm. the bench you know like just oh a carefree childhood you know which which of course again like was was not her case for very long um yeah so it definitely has has he heavy elements of the song for me but mm -hmm. um you know also I like it when a song that has is pretty heavy has like a a more of a like an upbeat <laughs> melody or um Exactly. It's, it's yeah. really the light, in some ways, the lightest song on the album, too. Right. Yeah. And Lydia Prasad is helping me, like, is my mm -hmm. doo-wop girl with me. So, yeah. Yeah. And I, the video turned out, like, just... <laughs> it's so beautiful. Very cool. It is yeah. so beautiful. If people haven't Thank seen you. it, they should really take a look at it because it is absolutely beautiful. It's a real performance, performance mm -hmm. art sort of thing. <laughs> I get, I get the feeling as I get older that the relationship that we have with our grandparents in some ways is almost closer than the ones we have with our parents. Mm -hmm. It's like, maybe it's just that we're once removed so we can see our grandparents more clearly than we can see our parents in some ways. Is that relation, does that make sense to you in that the relationship 100%. you had you have with your grandmother? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's like, yeah, like you said, there's just enough space to be able to, to be even closer in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I was very fortunate, though, that like my grandparents essentially helped to 
raise my sisters and I, we spent a lot of time at their farm. So there was also like a real closeness that was felt more like a little bit more than not more than grandparents. I mean, it was a grandparents relationship, but a very close one. So, <clears throat> but yeah, certainly that resonates. It's yeah. Important. <laughs> you have a way of in your writing, having a super huge picture and uh, also writing about things that from, for most of us stay hidden inside and going back and forth between the two and melding the two together. Um, like the line in, uh, I think it's Hoodoo, the song lives in a fistful of sky just beyond your reach, which is a beautiful line. Um, do some of these songs, because of the, the expanse of them, um, do, do they feel like you're writing, always trying to grab something beyond your own reach? Mm. Um, I'm not sure that I'd say that I'm setting out with that intention of, of trying to grab something beyond my reach. I mean, if, if that's something that does um, kind of flow out of the, the song or, or is, <clears throat> then I think that's, that's great, but that's not necessarily my, my intention. Yeah. Okay, what is your intention? <laughs> oh, good question. Oh, gosh. Oh, I just got a little bit. <laughs> um, my intention behind writing the songs. Is that the question? Yeah. Or? Yeah. yeah. Is there an intention? Is there mm. something that some kind of driving force? This isn't going to be like a, a good songwriting answer unfortunately um, I love it yeah <laughs> well yeah it's funny because I you know sometimes we'll teach songwriting workshops or um and I'm like you know of course it's like have a songwriting practice and this and, and certain rules that I do think there's obviously a lot of value to but I don't necessarily personally follow any of those any of those rules um but I don't like to be honest, I don't necessarily have a huge, again, I'm worried how this is going to sound. Let's just try it on. Let's see how it sounds. Okay. I'm, I'm, I don't necessarily have a huge intention behind a song when I sit down to write it. And that's, I think, part of the, the feeling of like, you know, being open to what I'm mm -hmm. going to receive, like when I sit down with my guitar and like a, and it's a snippet of a melody or a snippet of a line. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I'll kind of like, the song kind of starts to shape itself as I go, but there's less, there's less of this, okay, I'm going to write this song about right. this, this idea or this like experience um, that does become clear, like I said, as I go, but um yeah, I don't know. Do you think that that sounds strange? I think the idea of openness makes a lot of sense. It sort of goes back to the question at the beginning about is there a place where you go where it feels like this is the creative place? And I, I think and from the way that you write, too, that there is a lot of openness in your writing and you're always looking at the at the macro and the micro together at the same time. Um, but you end the album in almost a wordless place. I mean, it's so lovely the way that the album bookends from that beautiful intro to take us to this place that we've been trying to pin down. And then at the very end, the, the last words are almost divine and almost divine is, a, you know, a line in the chorus that happens again and again. And that's kind of how I felt is that that's where you were you were circling that area in the whole the whole way through the album and taking mm. you know almost to a place where there are no words left hmm. yeah that's a really I hadn't thought about it in those terms but that is a really beautiful way of describing it and yeah that makes a lot of, of sense sort of yeah trying to like 
almost like when a when a a bird is like diving down for a fish like you're trying to like get close to this this something this something divine or whatever you want to call it and then and yeah sometimes we don't we don't need any words to actually it's more of a, a feeling of a, or a place <clears throat> that we arrive to yeah yeah i'm glad that you mentioned that because now i can <laughs> think about the album in that in those terms <laughs> well each of the songs is a, is a wonderful deep dive. So thank you so much. And I wish you so much luck with this album. I think it's fantastic. Thank you, Lori. It's been such a pleasure to, to get to talk to you. It's been a real joy. <laughs> My pleasure too. Thanks a lot, Dana. Thank you. Bye. Bye.